to game one between Arthur and Rancor. Bottom right hand corner we have Arthur starting as the yellow Protoss. Upper left hand corner we have Rancor as the pink Zerg. I believe I said that there's going to be a game three between Arthur and Gandhi. Forgive me. I have vacation brain still coming back from vacation. This is on polypoid once again though. So this is going to be three polypoids in a row. It is polyamory everybody. Da -dun -dun Get rid of that. Like making the puns. Gotta get the dad jokes in while I can. Also, I like this color Zerg. I don't know why I like this. I was thinking about doing the color swap, but I'm gonna stick with it. Anyway, this is... I do want to announce for people that are on Twitch stream on Friday, I believe at 6 p.m. You're gonna have... or 5.30, somewhere around there. There's going to be a who's who of North American... Amazing North American players. You've got Crossy, you've got Gypsy, you've got Machine. You've got, and I bet others are going to join in once they see what's going on, but they're kind of doing a group play around, kind of ladder session uh, practice sort of thing with a lot. Whip, I believe, is involved. Basically, really, really amazing top level North American players are just going to be grouping up and playing a slew of games on Friday all together. All of their channels are up on Twitch. Check them all out. It's going to be fantastic. We're going to see a, looks like this is Overpool, Overpool, upper left hand corner for Ranker wants to get those additional probes out to either push off an initial probe that might be hatchering, or, or hatchering. But I guess that's when you harass a hatchery, you're hatchering. That's the official word for that now. Arthur checking the upper end corner is now making his way across. He is gonna opt for forge first. So rather than risking it, rather than, because potential four pools, things like that, he wants to make sure, oftentimes what Protoss players will do, especially in lieu of a lack of scouting information from their Zerg opponents, they will wait to scout the base to see what they're up against. Uh, before they opt to dedicate to Nexus or Gateway or anything along those lines, we are seeing a probe scout moving out for a Rancor now. Initially, this drone, not able, so nice block art from Arthur. It's gonna get a couple seconds. That's gonna pull the scouting drone back. Engaging on that probe, and that probe is very low on health. So at the very least, and oftentimes you can tell the timing with this as a Protoss player, you know that you're up against a pool build. Wandering it, he's gonna see two eggs morphing, is waiting to see whether those Eggs can no. He's just going for photon cannons. Actually, popping down two photon cannons immediately. So Arthur playing very, very cautiously. So before even seeing these eggs hatch, he's opting to go ahead and get those cannons. We are seeing six zerglings and a drone to follow. Hatchery making its way across, with the Overlord making its way here. The drone making its way to the upper right. He knows what's going on, and plopping down a nexus. So Zergling's going to make their way catty corner. Sometimes you do want to pull probes off the line because even with the gateway blockade, I believe even with the gateway here, there's going to be a gap along here. And some probes in that gap will prevent the Zerglings from just doing a run by. I think with the cannon positioning right here, I kind of like the cannon positioning being a little bit catty corner as as such because it's going to make it difficult for the Zerglings to get a lot, of camp, uh, a lot accomplished. This is a gap right here with Forge on the left. I believe somewhere... They're, they have the official rules for blockading, but this is the one... I don't know why this is the one bit I remember. That's Forge on the left of Gateway is not not tight against Zerglings. Third hatchery in the front for Rancor. The probe is going to be able to make its way back across and see that third hatchery, which usually suggests that this is going to be three hatch muta. Arthur already has the two cannons in decent position towards his natural expansion to perhaps deal with that. Nexus is going to warp on warp up momentarily. He has a simulator warping in. as that cybernetic score warping in. So he wants to try to keep an eye on. I missed a probe getting killed, I believe. Which Zergling got the kill. This hero Zergling got that kill. But he should have a good idea that this is, yeah. No, cancel. Interesting. So we're going to see Rancor opting actually to plop down a Hydralisk down instead. Conveying a lot of information that would suggest potential three hatch Hydra. Granted, as Arthur moved in, he didn't see the lair. Or I think he might have seen the lair. So he's going to try to, to pull a uh, quick one on him. Creep Colony morphing down. My question for Rancor on the follow-up of this, is he just going to go for a quick additional two hatcheries and maybe a third hatchery? So maybe like some sort of four or six hatchery action. Second probe moving out wants to try to see what it can see. Sutton Colony morphing in before that, actually as that happens. So I don't think that probe is going to be able to breach the line. That has to be a big question mark for him. Zergling's actually pressing forward. It looks like they are going to be able to get that probe, actually going to back it out. Maybe that probe can move the 12 o'clock base, at least verify that there's no hatchery there. And it looks like that is going to be the consolation prize. Wander up, make sure there's no hatchery at that base. 
Gateway's warping in for Arthur. This was ex and two additional, an additional cannon on the front. So the Zerglings are able to dispatch that probe again. To the at the twelve o'clock, but a Citadel of a Dune and a Gateway for Arthur. Arthur is somehow sniffing that this was going to be three hatch something. And another cannon warping in uh, for him on that front, just in case there was a potential bust. We do have Hydralisk speed being upgraded. A couple Zerglings are making their way across. Maybe he's like, okay, that was a little bit too aggressive of a scout denial. I don't know. Web Weapons 1 being upgraded. This He's not going to end up paying for this, fortunate for him. But usually this is a very, very risky, very, very risky build for Protoss. When you just skip all, when you don't have a, an actual scout and you're skipping Corsair altogether. Because that Corsair is absolutely vital for getting into your opponent's base and at least seeing what's happening there. A couple Hydralisks popping right here. This probe should be able to... Well, we'll see. No, back... Oh, did he see them? Backed off initially. I don't know if he saw it or not. Three Zerglings currently camping on the front, each with a probe kill. Well, two of them with a probe kill, so two out of three with probe kills. So they're hardened battle veterans. A lot of Zealots being built. Citadel of Adun is up. He's going, he's going to have... I think he's going to go for about that, I think it's like 7 minute, 30 second Zealot speed attack. Which actually might do pretty well against this Hydralisk build. We'll see. Hydralisks are starting to group up to engage Arthur. At the very least, as these Zealots march their way across, they are going to see the Hydralisks and catch them midfield. They might want to back off from here, because in open field, these Hydralisks can, yeah, peck away at these Zealots. The Zealots now retreating back to home base. Level 1 weapons... Ooh, this is going to be close. Is level 1 weapons going to finish... Before these Hydralisks take this forge out. And this is still just two gateways of production of Zealots. A cannon warping into the main. Oddly enough. Now just in case there were something coming in. And these Hydralisks able to dive in on that initial. That first cannon. Regrouping. Starting to attack this front door. Now working on that forge. We'll see if Arthur cancels that level 1 weapons in time. And Rancor it looks like he's going to settle for a contain. After he takes this forge. Maybe he's going to wait for reinforcements. And just clearing that front door. Dark Templar being built. There is no Overlord in position, I believe, to support. Now the Hydral's trying to peck away, but they're eating a lot of free cannon hits as the Zealots are pushing them back. Dark Templar out in the field. A couple probes pulling off the line, eating some free damage. And this Dark Templar does get spotted by Rancor. He's going to go ahead and back off with those Hydralisks. This is the nearest Overlord, and it is going to take a while before he can make his way towards the front. So Arthur holds his front. Loses his forge, does lose weapon one. He's making his way towards Psystorm. Right now, he's going to need to plop down some additional gateways to go ahead and more or less get an army to bust himself out of a potential contained situation. Rancor making his way to Lair Evolution Chamber about halfway finished. He does have Lair up. Now, here's the thing again there's only this single cannon at the Bane. This is, we are just seeing Phenomenized Carapace being upgraded. I'm wondering if we're also going to see a mutal. This is where Zerg can get really scary when there's a lack of Corsair in the air, is they can do these sort of tech switches. Overlord going to catch this Dark Templar, going to lower its shields. It's going to be able to press out. I believe it's going to immediately make a beeline to this 12 o'clock location. Rancor not grabbing additional bases yet. Slow Overlords following these Hydralisks. But here's the thing. This is a lot of Hydralisks to be dedicating at this stage of the match. And if you're not punishing your Protoss opponent, if you're not slowing their economy down, this is where they can kind of creep ahead and get a lot of action done. Overlord moving up to that 12 o'clock, I think hoping to catch that Dark Templar up there. And nice anticipation on Rancor's, on Rancor's part. Dark Templar makes his way out, sees no hatchery. Oh, just barely does get scouted. Is he going to get out of there? Run, DT, run! Okay, does get the DT out of there. He's going to take his hatchery at the mineral only instead. Zealots making their way across with some High Templar up to Arthur's mineral only. He does have an Archon in the background. Psystorm is finished. He's got five gateways up. Now getting his level 1 weapons at this forge back in his... In the kind of protective cusp of his bane. We do see that Spire about halfway finished. Here's the thing. As this Hydralisk army crashes down on that front, there is an opportunity where Arthur might be able to pin these attack forces. Otherwise, I'm a little bit concerned that these High Templar are a bit spread and are at risk of getting picked off. It looks like these Hydralisks are going to make their way down. Great size storm right there, catching that entire batch of Hydralisks. Now going to morph into an Archon. That Archon's not long for life, though. 
going to be sacrificial so that these, I assume these zealots can just make their way out to the front. Overlord speed is finished. We also see a robotics facility to potentially get some drops to follow this up. Rancor hunting a lot of this army down. Arthur almost feels like is donating a lot of units. Still might be able to sneak in and get some sort of action done at the middle only. Now the Hydralisks looping back around, trying to chase this attack force down. A Dark Templar re-engaging as there's no Overlord to follow. Going to peck away at these Hydralisks. And Arthur, yeah, again, maybe looking to go to that 12 o'clock. Moving into the 12 o'clock, just moving back. This is hilarious. This almost feels like a little bit of a Yakety Sax moment. So Dark Templar working on these unprotected Hydralisks. The Zealots looking for an additional base someplace to do some damage. It looks like that Overlord, this Overlord revealed that Dark Templar and finally wiped him out. He's just looking for additional bases and unfortunately he's not checking that mineral only just yet. Something Colony's being plopped down so Rancor feeling nice and safe there at this stage. Arthur does have a slight supply lead. He does have level one weapons coming online fairly soon. Has a lot of High Templar out and has all sorts of gateways to start playing some map control and maybe start establishing a third for himself. But his army not exactly cohesive here. It's trying to group up with these elves. Does have some high Templar. Uh, needs some some good storms here. Good storm on that back line. Loses his second zealot before it's able to drop a lot of storm. That would have been critical. Does have another wayward zealot. Does not have... Or sorry, another wayward high Templar. They didn't quite have some storm. Storms mostly his own zealots there with that Hydralist grouping. But that roaming Hydralist group has been completely dispatched. Which is going to allow Arthur to go ahead and wander forward. Get some cannons down. And grab his mineral only. Another wave of Hydralisks are moving their way across, but I think Arthur has enough of an attack force. We can engage. This is there's a lot of action happening all over the map. Rancor starting to back off now that he sees the Zealots pressing in. There is that two probes on site to go ahead and engage, and the Hydralisks are going to re-engage at that mineral only, picking up some stragglers and preventing additional damage from raining down here at that mineral only. Arthur trying to force the point. I don't think he needs to. He's If he can just go ahead and get hit that that third base up and continue to build his attack force, he should be okay. He does have the Spire up, is making his way towards Hive. He's now trying to take that 12 o'clock base. I'm looking for some, some Mutalisks, honestly, to pick off some Wayward High Templar, although he hasn't really needed it at this stage. High Templar caught in the back. Is he going to turn around and storm? Is he going to get picked off? Ugh, doesn't get managed to get that Psy Storm off. And those Psy Storms are critical. Is really the balancing factor, honestly, in all the matchups, in my opinion. But Moltrap likes to call it the great equalizer, and it is a huge, huge advantage. Shuttle with two High Templar, speak of the devils. Or I guess, speak of the priests. Not sure what to say in this regard. Moving up, this hatchery does not spot it because of a lack of vision. I don't think that Overlord caught it as well. So this natural expansion now completely exposed to a blanket of storm. A lot of drones getting killed. That's five, seven, eight kills, ten kills overall. Hydralisks and Zerglings starting to flood to the six o'clock to make sure that base wasn't taken. Some cannons finally warping in here. That mineral only. Units repositioning. That's going to allow the Zerglings to go ahead and engage on those cannons to the north. More Zealots and Archons engaging the Hydralisks to the south as they're a bit piecemeal. And it looks like those cannons are going to get taken down as Arthur's army is engaging from this bottom section and just leaving this nexus to get wailed on. And actually, the, uh, is he going to lose it? Is he going to need to cancel it here? Good side storm, pressing it off these two Zerglings, still doing work. And as this nexus warps in, a, a little bit of an empty storm, as this nexus warp in, it's already very, very low on health. Oof. So Shuttle still has those two high Templar. It's backed off. So a bit of... I want to say tit for tat, but the Nexus stands. So this is a win for Arthur overall. He does have a superior supply count. He does have level one weapons online. Do we have any sort of upgrades? We do. Or actually, I take it back. Ant Rancor with a huge upgrade advantage. Level two spines, level one carapace. That could be the factor that carries him into the mid game. A couple Hydralis, but I feel like another storm drop looks right there. Some Scourge in position. I'm not sure how many drones that actually caught. Another drop, not going to catch a lot. Did get a Psy Storm with the Mutalisks, which is going to leave them a little bit weak. But Arthur re-engaging this army, starting to move up. Rancor trying to get that 12 o'clock base up. If he can get that third gas, that will be absolutely critical for him. Is behind the supply head in upgrades. Does have this Mutalisk force that could potentially pick off 
some High Templar, but instead opting, looking for the High Templar, not quite able to find them. These Archons turning around to go ahead and engage this. The Archons split from the rest of this attack force, and it feels like Arthur has had the, the superior supply count, but has had kind of a sloppy army engagement. Hasn't really had his army fully cohesive or attacking at the right points to really capitalize on his superior supply. Right there, wiping out the rest of the Mulus. It's going to allow the a nice guard job. That's exactly what you want to see. The Archons just pinned on those High Templar to keep them alive. Still some High Templar lagging behind some Zealots. At even a probe in there lagging behind. They're all moving into that 12 o'clock base. You can just see Arthur just having a lot of trouble controlling this army. Some Scythe Storms not catching a lot right there. But just diving into that 12 o'clock. Going to wipe out that hatchery and that sunken colony with everything else. But a counterattack from Ranker saying, okay, your army's here. I'm just going to go ahead and dive and take out that Nexus I was working on earlier. And I believe he's going to get it, which is going to be a big swing of momentum. Arthur loses that Nexus. He's diving into that natural expansion. There's a good SimCity there. Some Zerglings are engaging. I like that Spore Colony pushing that Observer back. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of Lurkers to make that additionally worthwhile. Some Psystrom to clear up those Zerglings around that Sunken Colony, but the SimCity is too strong. Going to back off with that rest of that army. The reinforcements from that attack on that third base, moving in, going to take out that... Uh, takes out a High Templar that's full of Storm. Another High Templar full of Storm, and Arthur not getting those Psystrom's out. He was able to wipe out that 12 o'clock base. Sheesh. So attacks happening absolutely everywhere. I actually... I'll take it back. This feels like a... This almost feels like a reset to the early game. Arthur's main base looking somewhat thin. His natural expansion is still mining. He needs to get an additional base at some point. High Templar, full of storm. He's not going to storm before that hatchery is planted. It's kind of an afterthought. The main looking very thin for Rancor. Another engagement. I'm losing track of the, the base count because there's just so much action across here. Good size storms. Rancor trying to push in and make sure that additional base does not... Get up. Beautiful size storm catching a lot of Hydralisks as they're pinned on that corner. And we'll see if more reinforcements coming from the south, Zerglings and Hydralisks. And it looks like, once again, Arthur going to get denied that third base and pressing in this attack while he goes ahead and takes that 12 o'clock. So Rancor in a superior economic position. His main looking a bit thin. He does have that Hive Tech up. He's got this mineral only that's been working for him. He hasn't quite resaturated that natural expansion to probably where he wanted to. Is still behind the overall supply count. But Arthur, Arthur hasn't turned the supply count lead into additional bases. It looks like that High Templar did get killed by Zergling. How, how humiliating. It's got to be, if you're going to die, you got to die to a Mutalisk or a Hydralisk or something like that. To a Zergling, some Zerglings pushing in, natural expansion. Six o'clock base, Arthur trying to set up to take that. He's going to clear out some of the Zerglings that are pressing in there. Might, I think he might be able to establish that. But Ranker is starting to build a bank. He's got a lot of hatcheries. He's going to go ahead and take this 9 o'clock. If he can just macro up, if he can just drone up and macro up, he does have that 12 o'clock base up now. Just needs to get drones there and get some semblance of an army. And he, he should be in a strong position. He's already got, he's working on essentially level 3 carapace. And I assume momentarily after that, level 3 spines. Also want to point out that we haven't seen Lurkers at any stage of this match just yet. He's basically done this just on pure Hydralisk. More Hydralisks moving down. He's still peeking in at that Mineral Only, but that Mineral Only is empty. I'm not sure if he realizes that 6 o'clock is being established. This is a much harder base to take because of that ramp, especially with Cannons and Psystorm in the way. Arthur regathering his attack force, again still with that supply count lead, does have level 2 weapons. This is actually one of those stages of the game where, ironically, they talk about uh, Arbiter being a good thing. We do have a starport up. I'm wondering if we're going to see it, as I have that thought, actually. I would love to see it. Greater Spire being morphed, by the way, for late game. Perhaps to try to apply pressure to the 6 o'clock base. Zealots having some trouble. Again, allowing these High Templar to get picked off before they're even storming. And that has been a big, big lack in these fights for Arthur is, is he's had the side storm, he's had a lot of energy and just hasn't executed those, just hasn't blanketed the Idolisks in the side storm, which has made these Idolisks a lot stronger than they would be otherwise. Zealot's doing additional damage, at least pushing this off. 
These hydros still camping over that mineral only. 12 o'clock base is saturating with these, and these observers can in fact see it. Sutton Colony morphing in additional hatchery and more SimCity. Looks like those, some Scourge right there. Okay, so they are going to get taken out with that observer. Wow, that was nice timing on my part. The Stargate, I'm, I'm almost hoping to see, because recall at this stage can sometimes be fun. A Mutalisk switch, which a lot of this tech at the main is very vulnerable here, and... This is very zealot heavy, not a ton of Archons that I see now in this attack force. So maybe a latent size storm can catch these Mutalisks, maybe. Instead, diving in, catching a lot of these Mutalisks, size storming themselves primarily and the zealots. So, wow. And maybe eight, a third of size storm total, completely denying that base. The zealots just oof. This is an oof moment. I need to get an oof emote is what I need to do. Zergling scouting the upper end corner and now just like checking bases to make sure that Arthur didn't sneak something additional. Rancor essentially sitting at four bases as soon as this gets mining. Essentially sitting at four bases versus two. And he has these Mutalisks uh, going ahead and denying that mineral only. And Ran Arthur really just can't go any place while he doesn't have Archons or something to deal with these Mutalisks. Some Zerglings pressing in as well. Actually now building a Corsair. Level three weapons online. Small mercies. There are cannons to go ahead and push these Mutalisks back out of the main, but what this allows Rancor to do is to just sit back and, again, macro up, get a lot of these bases saturated. I feel like most of this match, and I'm not sure because I haven't been doing a, a super close eye on the supply counts, but if Rancor takes the supply lead here, I think it might be the first time in the match. Mutalisks dodging some size storms, still able to pick off some Eye Templar, or at least force some Archons to be built before their time. Mulisks finally cleaned up. And we see a handful of Guardians now moving in to go ahead and try to clean up the cannons here at the 6 o'clock. Zerglings getting wiped out. There should be Psystorm in not too long to deal with this, and there's those Corsairs, keep in mind. Guardian going way out of the way to go ahead and die to these, these Dragoons. Probes Moving up, and you can just see how desperate for minerals Arthur is. Probes moving up. Those Guardians should get taken out momentarily. Rancor doesn't need to do any of these fancy, like, let's go to Tier 3 Guardian whatever tech, though. Because, I mean, he's got map control. He's got... He just needs to macro. He needs to spend his resources. Needs to get the, these gas running. He still doesn't have this gas here at the 9 o'clock, which is... Honestly, I feel like it's giving Arthur's opportunity to get back into this match. Arthur now evicting these units out of that 3 o'clock base. More units starting to push up for Rancor. Rancor still in f definitely in the lead. Arthur trying to clean up just a flood of Zerg forces absolutely everywhere. More High Templar getting picked off. Man, Rancor's really been on top of that. And the Dragoons are all that remains, it looks like here. Some z Zealots trying to move in. Another Observer getting picked off. And Rancor now, again, with kind of... I don't want to call this like a hard contain, but a soft contain. So more probes going to get wiped out as the natural expansion is mined out. So Arthur is basically down to one base. And Rancor should just be able to starve him off at this stage. Should. Now starting to establish that 9 o'clock. Hydralis just free... Actually accidentally targeted his own Overlord, I think, right there. Able to walk up. Maybe the cannons took him out. Not sure. Hydralisk walking up, taking out a handful of cannons. Good size storm right there, but this is starting to look like the Alamo. A desperate defense. Always remember the Alamo. I have been negligent in my commentator duties and forgetting the Alamo up to this stage. Now I remembered it, so I've done my duty. I think it's like once a year you gotta make the Alamo reference to make sure it's remembered. Anyway. Hydralisks, just a handful of Hydralisks kind of grouping with the contain. At this stage, Rancor, all he needs to do is sit back and macro up. Still engaging on this forward front with these Zerglings. We'll see if he can... Uh, honestly, this kind of comes to Rancor right now. Is whether he, Well, it looks like he's going to continue to pick off these High Templar. If he can continue to push back Arthur as he tries to take that mineral only. Zerglings starting to pour into the 6 o'clock base. There are cannons there waiting, but these are, keep in mind, crack Zerglings. There's GG from Arthur. Just too much to hold back. So Rancor slowly applying the pressure. Does get the supply lead at the end here. But I gotta say, Arthur made a game of it. Arthur made a game of it. 
GG. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening. Always remember the Alamo.